Okay, I'm going to take Windows 8 release preview and attach it to a Windows Server 2012 Beta Essentials virtual machine. So let's uh, go ahead and paste in the URL to get to the connector. And let's see how this goes. All right, so the install definitely takes a, a bit longer. I think this VM actually is on a traditional drive, which is a little slower. All right, let's see how that goes. I should point out the virtual machine I'm backing up to is actually in the midst of Excuse me, the virtual machine I'm connecting to is also in the midst of backing up another physical machine. Okay, so when this comes back up, you'll see some new stuff that the client goes through when connecting. That's interesting. did pause the video and I'm also um, migrating into an SSD. So the rest of this uh, video should speed up considerably there. It's on an SSD. It just took a couple minutes. So I only lost uh, two, three minutes of video there. All right, do I want a computer description? Sure. Let's name my virtual machine. Okay, so now communication is from virtual machine to virtual machine. This thing should be screaming, screamingly fast. Um, I'm also on a RAID 0 of two solid state drives, an OCZ Vertex 4 and a Samsung 830 in a RAID 0 config stripe. So um, it's about as fast as it's going to go to install. So I'll just leave the video recording in real time at this point to see how long a very basic Windows 8 image takes to connect to a Windows Server Beta Essentials. Let me show you that machine for a second. So there's that machine, virtual machine. Okay. So oh, it's still chugging away. Okay, this machine, um, it might offer for me to migrate my settings from another login.
called pbrarin over to this user account I created. So this is the domain stuff going on, which definitely uh, slows the install down a bit. Okay. So that's, that's it. The connector is installed. Now look at this. This explains to me if I want to migrate. Okay, so this situation was a little different. On another machine with Windows 7, um, it, uh, it cranked out a migration for me here. Okay, so it's ready to... Um, okay, interesting. Give me a little... Notice it's temp it's doing a backup automatically, first backup. Um, well, that is, I'm in, so I'm not sure why that popped up. All right, well, at this point it looks very much like Windows Server 2008. Just a quick check here. A look at our uh, settings of this virtual machine. So this has, oh, I don't actually have it on the right VM. Um, I have the right uh, network. And I'd prefer, and I'd actually prefer the optimized driver for the virtual machine. But obviously the performance is still looking quite good. Let's see, here's a look at the server itself. And its settings. It's a uh, network adapter, also E1000. All right. Well, let's just go back and uh, yeah, that backup's going going well. Mind you, it's rather um, small, but it's all on one RAID 5 SSD. So it looks like the first machine I backed up, which was Windows 7 physical laptop, that took a while, but on a VM here, this is going uh, going very well. Okay, while that's cruising along, I'm going to try to restore a laptop from a backup I did a few minutes ago. Let's see if uh, that seems to do much. Oh, I also want to look at the speed of the processor here. Okay, we can see the Ethernet, what it's doing. Nice. Oh, we're getting some decent speeds here. That's good. Um, okay, the backup finished. So that was fast. Now let me cruise on over to a test restore. Sorry about messing up the video size there. So to do a restore, it should be pretty simple. Let's hit Windows plus C to bring up charms. Click settings, click power, click shutdown. All right, that's doing it from within Windows 8 itself. Now in the settings of this virtual machine that you're watching shut down, that just finished shutting down, we want to mount the ISO file, the appropriate ISO file. And I've got the ISO file right over here. No, I don't. That's the uh, server install. Let me get the client one over there. Okay, I've moved the ISO file on up. So what we want is the Essentials Beta English Restore ISO file. Turned on at boot. Okay. 
Um, I had triggered another job in another window. Sorry about that. Kind of messed things up. Uh, it was still powered on, and now it's gray. So it didn't like that. All right. No problem. Here's the restore CD. Now it's going to mount just fine. And now when I power on the VM, we should record the entire restore experience. Oh, it doesn't look like it powered up from the uh, CD. So I need to uh, think a little smarter about how I'm going to handle that. Mind you, in our physical world, you wouldn't really have that problem. Okay, so the CD is mounted. So we've got a boot order issue here. So what we want to do is... Um, Boot into the bias splash screen. Yeah, do that again. When you open up settings while it's shutting down, strange stuff happens. It's, it's normal. So we want to go into the bias screen. Let me make this a little more obvious what's going on here. Bring up a console. There we go. You can see what I'm doing better. Power up. Save, F10, press any key, there we go, restore. So now I'm recording a restore session. Let me go full screen on that so I don't want to miss anything. All right, so the restore wizard looks very much like it's looked on Windows Home Server 2011. This particular VM um, is actually 32-bit, I believe. There you go. Looking awfully familiar. That's the name of the server. Okay, it's actually showing a, a different, older generation home server as well. I wonder if it's actually um, compatible. Kind of intergenerational, um, this Restore CD. Hmm. Kind of doubt that's going to work. Invalid server function. Yeah, it looks like um, I really shouldn't be connecting to an old generation server. That's my uh, guess here. Let's just move on and go to the thing I should be connecting to. Um, I created a bunch of accounts. I'm getting a little confused on what I'm supposed to use there. Okay, that worked nicely. It's the virtual machine called Test2 we want to restore. If we click Details, we'll see it's rather small. So um, basically a base image of Windows 8. Nothing else on there. All right, we'll see how long that takes.
Okay, that's looking like it's um, done everything right. I have a thin provision drive. I don't actually have a seven, half 750 again. Um, and there it goes. Extremely quickly. Nice. I want to look at the server while it's being uh, loaded just a bit. Probably won't even uh, get in on time here. Okay, we're getting excellent gigabit speed here. So finally, this product's using the real network speed. This is uh, this is kind of awesome. I'm going to try an old um, laptop as well. Let's see how that does. But just seeing the speed, I never had this happen um, on Windows Home Server 2011. It always seemed to be slower. Um, I want to see CPU too. Okay, so the CPU is getting used. Granted, I only assigned one of eight cores to it. Uh, probably should give it more. It's just uh, me testing, but it's not really limiting me. It's not like it's 100 or maxed out. I have four CPUs in a Core i7 with hyperthreading, so ESXi thinks there's eight. Um, All right, well, when the server's running in solid state and the client's running in solid state, we obviously get some pretty phenomenal performance. And I managed to uh, obscure the stopwatch there, but it took under two minutes. So there you have it. Let's, uh, let's reboot that thing. And let's ignore the boot any, or hit any, hitting any keys. And let's just watch it boot windows nice and fast. From backup, full bare metal restore. There you have it. All right. So it sure looks like bare metal restore worked out just fine. And there comes the dashboard. Okay, nothing's really changed there. No backups. Um, well, that's interesting, because when we do a volume shadow copy, at the moment in time we started a backup, it wouldn't know there's no previous backups. If we go to the dashboard, we should see one. All right, I didn't use an appropriate uh, login. There's my users. And there's my backup. Successful backup is there. And there's the details. All right. So everything everything looks is looking good. The speed was good. Um, and they still give us a little bit of media sharing. And I like that they keep the uh, domain name registration, which is always a whole lot easier than uh, dealing with dynamic DNS and certificates and all that. So, all right. There's my quick look at Windows Server 2012 Beta Essentials Backup and Restore. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching. Good night.